Have you ever felt stifled in a game of Pez? Have you felt like your opponent has more players on the pitch than you, where you just can't break free of that constant pressure and you feel like you're on the back foot the whole time? Well, this one tip may just help you out. Hello ladies and gents, I'm Spoony Pizzas and this tip will certainly help you create more chances and make your defending life much easier. If you've been watching the gameplay on screen as I talk, you would notice that West Brom had it pretty easy cutting through my team with passes. My players were a good 12 yards off their nearest man with the ball and when I tried to break out, I'm left with few options on who to pass the ball to without letting all the West Brom players get back behind the ball. Let's back this up a bit before I fix what's happening on the pitch. So if we look here, as I stated, my players are a good 12 plus yards off their players. This means that they can turn and pick a pass forward far too easily. Is it a formation clash? Well, some formations counter other formations, but there's so many variables with player styles coming into play that can change the dynamic of a team. So you can't say this formation will be this formation because the play styles come into play and there's a ton of other things as well. So the first solution is to find a quick fix. Now, if we look in the bottom left hand corner, their attack defense strategy is set to attacking, which is one red bar whilst mine is neutral. So it's at this moment in time when I can see how far my players are off of theirs, which is the reason I switch my attack defense strategy to attacking. So you can do this by just double tapping the D-pad up or down, depending what you want to do. And if you're wondering, I'm actually playing a frontline press with aggressive pressing. And if you saw West Brom's first attack and how deep my team was defensively, you'll know why I made this change. Now let's take a look at the options I have from an offensive point of view. Now that as I've just recovered the ball. Remember before I changed my attack defense strategy, pretty much Aubameyang was the only player just beyond the halfway line. Now if you look at how many players I have forward and available to pass the ball to, with the fullbacks bombing forward as well, and Lacazette almost gets on the end of this cross. Now let's take a look just how much harder it is for West Brom to play out from defense in comparison to the first few minutes. They have to deal with my players hounding and pressing each nearby player and I quickly win the ball back. So you're probably thinking, that's it. That's all I need to do. Just set my attack defense strategy to one red bar for the win. Not so fast. But in this match against West Brom, the switch made all the difference. Again, look at all the attacking options. I was able to just to take over and pretty much control and dominate the game from there on and get the win. In this next match against Wolves who play a 5-3-2, being the away side, they set their strategy to defensive. One blue bar and I switched mine to attacking, which is one red bar and nicked an early goal. Then I saw this here. Just look at their striker. He's in their own half and I have three players in my own half. And to me, that is a waste. You can generally defend one versus one quite easily from the halfway line, unless you're up against someone super fast like Mbappe. But look at this, even though I'm playing an attacking strategy, those gaps are still appearing and Wolves are having it far too easy for my liking. It's making it harder to get the ball back and they're still getting the ball forward and able to create chances relatively easily. It was at this point when I switched to the second red bar, all at attack, which will result in one of your defenders playing alongside your front players, but you'll see the entire Wolves team push right back you obviously have to be careful not to lose possession too often, but if you're good at keeping the ball under pressure, it shouldn't be that difficult. Beforehand, I had one centre forward against five of their defenders. Now, look, and I have seven players breaking into the box trying to score, and their centre forward is being picked up by my defensive midfielders. And back somewhere on the halfway line is my centre back, so if they do ever manage to clear the ball, get the ball forward, you know, I should be able to intercept and here you can see that I'm quickly driving forward with the ball and some quick interchanges of passes and then I'm able to get the shot off on goal. So when it comes to attack and defense strategy, there is no one solution to fix all. You can't say if a team is playing defensive, go for an attacking strategy. I would say if you're playing a 12 minute match, then by the fifth in-game minute, you should be able to determine if you're struggling to create or defend and it's at that point you need to experiment with the uh, attack and defense strategy by changing it up. From an offline perspective if you have a decent side and are playing away from home 
you'll find most teams, even Manchester City, as you're seeing here, will opt for a defensive strategy until around half time when they'll switch it to near uh, neutral if the score is level. But when you're the away side, you may find your opponent's team, regardless of strength, will either go for neutral or an attacking strategy. I tend to find it's much more difficult when they're um, set to an attacking strategy because that means you have to do a bit more defending. If they do go a goal down, they often respond by going for an attacking strategy, which often makes people think script, uh, the, like the AI has to bounce back and score. No, it's not that. It's just that they've changed their strategy and you can't cope because you've just been used to having the majority of the ball of the match. And now you've actually got to do a bit of defending and sure you take your chances. If it's a cup competition, then you'll often see the CPU go all out attack if they're a goal down and it's like the 70th minute. But carefully placed long passes over their midfield and attack and you can easily destroy them and score and you know you can get four or five goals quite easily it's certainly important to pay attention to the changes your opponent is making as it can swing the tide either way you may feel like the the game changes and what it is is probably the ai changing their or or your opponent just changing their attack and defense strategy so adjust yours as you see fit and try and um, counteract what they're trying to do to you if none of the attack and defense strategies are working for you, then just adjust your formation and tactics. It's obviously a formation and tactics clash. So to sum it up, just like I said, see how the match plays out. Adjust your attack and defense strategy to what you're seeing on the pitch. And if you're dominate the game, dominating the game, then leave it. But if you're struggling to get control of the game, then change it. I mean, when I start matches, I tend to leave them at neutral, see how things go. And like I said, after the five in-game minutes, on a 12 minute game then that's when i'll make my changes if necessary anyway that's all from me hopefully you guys found this video useful if you did don't forget to smash that like button and if you haven't already done so please subscribe to the channel thanks a lot guys i'll see you soon bye bye